here it's Allison and today on Thinking Outside the Box I'm going to show you how I created these really cute Fimo leather effect heart corner bookmarks. I'm going to go ahead and get set up so let's get started. Supplies needed to create this project is um, you will need some Fimo leather effect and it comes in 12 colors, which is awesome. It is now available in the United States at Michael's and Joann's and I'm here to tell you that it is very, very fresh. Um, it's very soft and fresh. You're going to need a drill with a very fine drill bit. You're going to need the cutter to create the shape for the bookmark, a stamp of your choice, and this is just a bumblebee. You're gonna need some thread, and I am using Coates Extra Strong Upholstery Thread, and of course a needle. And um, depending on which clay you use, you will choose what color of paint you're gonna need. And this is a new product that I, or this product's actually been around for a long time, but I've only been using it the last few months. I picked it up at Tuesday morning, um, and it's a cream wax, and it's been working beautifully on polymer clay, and especially for the leather effects. Um, I love it. Uh, your pieces will still stay flexible. And you will need a little bit of glue, and I like to use Well Bond. So I'm going to go ahead and get my clay conditioned, and we'll go ahead and make a corner bookmark. All right, so the first thing that you want to do is condition your clay. And um, I ran this through on a number four about 20 times to get it good and conditioned. And that's how thick it is. Uh, number one is the thickest setting on my pasta machine. And the first thing that we're going to do is put our impression into the clay. And I'm just going to go ahead and put my stamp on an acrylic block. And just kind of straighten it. And I'm going to wet it with a baby wipe. This clay is very soft. So you want to make sure that you have some sort of a relief on your stamp. And I'm gonna go ahead and stamp into, let's move that, the first one. And you want a pretty good impression in there. You want it to be deep, but you don't wanna go all the way through the clay. All right, that looks good. So we're gonna go ahead and put that on the tile. And to do that, I like to Put it down like this because and pat it going up to get any air out and we're going to do the same with this one so i'm going to wet this again and go ahead and put our impression in the clay now this clay is kind of elastic -y. It's hard to explain. It's definitely uh, different than Sculpey or, um, I mean, like Primo and, and all of those. So um, it definitely has a different vibe to it. So you'll, you'll get used to it as you go along. So the first thing I want to do is cut our shape out. And that's up to you where you want to put it. I'm just going to line it up. And that looks good to me. So I'm going to take my acrylic block and go ahead and push down, getting a good impression. I'm not going to wiggle or jiggle on this one because I do not want to change the shape. So I'm simply going to pull the cutter up and then go ahead and pull off that excess clay. Then we'll go ahead and do the other and put it down on the tile like we did the first one, making sure there's no air underneath. 
and go ahead and cut that one out. And you don't have to have a design on both sides. I just like it. So you could leave one side blank if you want. And, you know, you use whatever stamp that you want to. So I'm going to cut that out. Pull the cutter out. And this is a special cutter that Rhonda and I designed just for these bookmarks. This is not a typical uh, heart shape. This will help you get the corners needed to make it fit on your, your uh, book, any book. So what we're gonna do now is put this in the oven. I like to bake the uh, leather effects at 275 for 60 minutes. I have found that even though the package um, tells you to bake at 30, let's see, and this color that I'm using is nut. Um, let me see if I can find what it says. So it says to bake at 265 for 30 minutes. I have found that the uh, this clay will be much stronger if you bake it 275 for 60 minutes. So you just want to make sure that your oven is consistent. So I'm going to go ahead and put these in the oven and I'll be back. All right, these are out of the oven and fully cured and cooled off. So now we are going to take them off of our tile and I do that with a clay knife. Move that out of the way. And the next step is we want to smooth out our edges. So for that, I'm just taking a coarse nail file. Um, this is actually the coarse side. And just running it along the edge. And I'm going to do that until I am happy with how it looks. You're going to get it nice and smooth. And then I'll finish this off camera and be back. My edges are nice and smooth, and as you can see, this is now very flexible and looks very much like leather. So our next step is going to be adding, I kind of, I, I want to make the stamp stand out, so we're going to add a little paint to it and wipe it off. So it's just going to be down into the crevices of the stamp, and let me move in a little. So I'm just using some Amsterdam standard series and this is the Van, Van, Van Dyke Brown. I think I pronounced that correctly. And I'm just gonna pounce it into those areas. Don't know why I used my left hand. I'm not left-handed. I am battling a cold right now, so I apologize if there's heavy breathing into the camera. Um, hopefully it's not the Rona. But, all right, so now you're just gonna take, I, what I do is I take a paper towel and I just fold it flat and simply wipe off the excess paint so it's only down into the crevices. And do that with the other one and then we're gonna let that dry. If you wanna add a little more paint in this area, which I've noticed because it's such a wide open area, you tend to wipe the paint off of it. So you can just go in with a brush and add that. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish these up uh, with the paint and add a little extra in those areas, let them dry, and then I'll be back for the next step. All right, the paint is almost completely dry. You really wanna make sure that it's not wet to the touch anymore. And our next step is going to be just putting a little bit of glue in between the two pieces. And the reason I do this is it just makes it a lot easier 
to line them up and um, get the holes in the right place and stitch it together. It's just kind of tacking it together. Um, it's not a complete permanent bond. So I'm just gonna take a little bit of glue and I'm just putting it along the edge. And I'm gonna do that on both pieces. just on the very edge. And now I'm going to take our pieces and line them up and put them together. And this was the reason it's very important not to do the wiggle jiggle because you will um, change the shape of your hearts and then they're not gonna line up perfectly. So I'm just wiping the excess glue off the edge, making sure everything is lined up. And then we are going to let this dry. And once it's dry, I'll be back. All right, the glue is now dry. So what I wanna do is this is just a black gel pen I'm gonna make some markings on here of where I wanna drill my holes. So the first thing I'm gonna do is start with middle, and that'll be my starting point. Now, I wanna go six up, and that's gonna be in millimeters. So each, you're gonna go from that dot that you made, line it up, and every five millimeters, I'm gonna put a, a dot. So, all right, so I have six there, the one in the middle, and six going up, and they are five millimeters apart. The next thing we're gonna do is drill our holes. And I like to take a piece of styrofoam so that I don't drill through my work table. And go ahead and get my Dremel out and line up my drill bit to the hole. Oop, gotta turn the power on. help. So I'm going to line my drill bit up to the hole, hold it straight up, drill a hole. And go ahead and do that with all of, all of them. have all of our holes drilled and I'm just going to take a baby wipe or you could take a moist towel and just wipe off any of the uh, gel pen markings that were on there and now we're gonna go ahead and sew So you're going to pick a thread. And I like this thicker thread. This is the upholstery thread. And you don't need a whole lot of it. And you could use a beading needle. I'm just using this needle because it's easier to thread the eye of it. And the first thing you're gonna do is go in through the middle and up that first hole. And that glue 
is not super, you know, strong on there. It's not gonna hold it together if you move it around too much. So you don't wanna move it around too much. You want to uh, press it together. And now you're just gonna go through all the holes back and forth. like you're stitching it. Now we're up at the end and we're gonna go back. So go back through that hole. All right, and for our last stitch, you're going to turn it over and there's one hole left. You're gonna go through that hole and not all the way to the front, go up through the middle. And now we'll cut off the extra. We are going to make a surgeon's knot, a couple of them actually. So pull your threads tight Take them, go over and over again, and we're gonna take it through the middle and tighten it that way so that our knot will be on the inside. And you wanna do that one more time. And pull it so that the knot is in the middle. Then. Take your two threads, open this up just a little, and you're going to cut the two threads down there so they don't show. And now it is fully stitched. So the only thing that we have left is to put the wax coating on, and we'll go ahead and do that. And I like to use two layers of it just for extra protection. And I like applying it with my e.l.f. Uh, eye crease brush. So get out your wax cream and just put a little bit on your brush and go ahead and brush. You're just doing a thin layer because you can do this twice. And I like to, you just do it right over the thread and then just a little more and I'll pounce it in where the paint is and that'll help protect that paint as well. And I'm pouncing to make sure I get way down in there and then I can go back over and get the edges. And then you're gonna let that dry for about 15 minutes. Flip it over, do the other side the same way. Let that dry 15 minutes, flip it over, and do that twice. And once I'm done with that, I'll be back. The very last step is you want to take a paper towel and or a soft cloth, and you're just going to buff the wax that's on there. Flip it over and get the other side. And now you have a corner bookmark. 
and these are wonderful for journals, for, you know, books, for your Bible, for whatever you want to use them on. You just stick it, well, that's too many sheets. Just stick a few sheets in there, put your bookmark on, and you're good to go. It doesn't fall off, and when you close your book, it doesn't stick out all that much. These are really great gifts that you can give. And that's it. I wanted to show you that with the um, Fimo Leather Effect, you can't really do a Skinner blend, but you do get something that comes out kind of cool when you try to do a Skinner blend. So I'm happy with that. But all these colors, all these bookmarks, they'll make great gifts, Christmas time, birthdays, any time of year. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I hope that you found it helpful. And if you did, please like this video by giving me a thumbs up, leave a nice comment, and until next time, bye-bye. Thank <laughs> you.